In this lecture, we are going to discuss Turing machine. So, before designing any Turing machine, we must see what is the need for this machine. Was pushed on automata not sufficient for us? So, starting from DFA, we can see the power of any machine. is determined by the type of language it can accept. So a DFA and NFA they can accept those languages which are regular in nature. So we cannot design a DFA or NFA for this language a to the power n, b to the power n such that n greater than equal to 0. Why? Because this language is not regular. So we need more, po more powerful machine and that machine was pushed on automata. In fact, pushed on automata, they can accept all languages which were not accepted by DFA or NFA. The class of languages that can be accepted by pushed on automata is context-free languages. But there are some languages which are not even context-free. For example, here L1 equal to A to the power n, B to the power n, C to the power n, such that n greater than equal to 0. We take an example string which belongs to this language. For example, 3As, 3Bs and 3Cs. This string is in the form of this language. Can we design a post on automata for it? Or post on automata, they can accept the strings which belongs to this language. No. Why not? Because starting from scratch, suppose we push all the A's here. Suppose A, 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 they all post in the stack. Now, the moment first B is encountered, we can cancel the first A that is popped. Second B, it is also popped. Second, the third B, it is also popped against the A's. Now, A's and B's, they are masked they are equal, then only the stack is empty. But what about C? The stack is now empty. So, we cannot remember how many A's and B's were there so that C can be matched against them. That's the reason this language A to the power n, B to the power n, C to the power n, they cannot be accepted by post on automata. So we need more powerful machine and that machine is our Turing machine. Now what is a Turing machine? First we give an informal definition of Turing machine. Then we discuss. Then we design Turing machine for a particular language. So this is our definition part for a Turing machine. A Turing machine M is defined by M equal to Q summation big gamma delta Q0. This one is our new symbol. It was not present in either DFA, NFA or pushed on automata. This square symbol, it is blank. And next is F, the setup states. So we define one by one these doubles. Q is our finite setup states. Summation is our input alphabet. Big gamma, it is our finite setup symbols called tape alphabet. Tape, we see letter. Delta is our transition function. Q0, it is our start state. This square symbol, it is a special symbol called the blank. And F, it is our set of final states. So, all the tuples, they are same, but this square symbol, that is blank. Now, delta, this transition function in Turing machine, they can be defined as Q cross big gamma derives or they can be q cross big gamma cross l comma r what it means actually it means we are in a particular state we can read a symbol from the tape alphabet from the tape all the symbols they are written in tape that is input symbols then we can move to another state or it can be the same state 
the symbol on the tape they can be replaced by a new one or the same symbol and the read write head they can move one symbol one cell left or right this is our transition function and this transition function is for deterministic turing machine okay now we take an example and see how this transition function they work so this is our example part so this is our turing machine there is a control unit all the inputs they are written in this tape without any gap in between this is our read write head it can be positioned to any symbol initially when we start it is positioned to the very first symbol but i write it here anyway just for uh, defining the turing machine now our delta is as we mentioned q cross big gamma derives or it can be q cross big gamma cross l comma r what it means actually so here it means we are in state q0 we are in state q0 we are reading a from the input tape and here is our tape our tape in turing machine it is open from both the side both side are open so it is infinite it can store infinite number of symbols but one thing must we must remember we don't put any blank symbols in between the inputs so here it cannot be blank they are all contiguous okay now we are in state q0 we are getting a as input then what we are doing we are moving to a new state that is q1 this symbol a it is replaced by d and we move one cell right okay once again i am repeating this we are in state q0 we are reading a from the tape then what we are doing we are moving to a new state q1 this a is replaced by d and we move one cell right see we cannot take a jump we can move one by one similarly in this case we are in state q1 we are reading a b from tape then we are moving to state q2 this b is replaced by x and we move one cell left on the left hand side in the previous case it was on the right hand side so this is our delta okay now we take a diagrammatic representation of this delta function so in this example this transition rule says we are in state q0 and reading a from the tape then our next new state will be q1 this a is replaced by x and we move one symbol one cell right so here we are in state q0 we are reading a so this becomes our left hand side and what happens we move to state q1 we replace this a by x and move one symbol right so we reach here one symbol right so this is our transition rule for this one in the next case delta q0 comma b equal to q1 y l what it means we are in state q0 what we are reading from the tape b then what we are doing our ne next state will be q1 this b is replaced by y and we move one symbol left 
one cell left okay so here it is we are in state q0 input is b we are reading b from the tape then our new uh, our new state is q1 this b is replaced by y so we replace this b by y and we move one cell, one cell left so we come here on the left hand side okay so these are our transition rules in next lecture we design a tearing machine for any particular language and see how it works so this is our definition part for tearing machine before designing any tearing machine this part must be cleared thanks for watching this video Thank you.